Welcome back everyone to Grand Tactician The Civil War. If you have not seen this current campaign up to this point, there's a link in the description that will take you back to episode one. So you can watch it all the way through and get caught up. It is June of 1862. We have just completed the Military 2 policy, which allows for the creation of corps. Now up until this point, the armies that we have had in the field are actually technically core because divisions were the highest unit they could have underneath. Now we can create actual armies with independent core. And so I've done that here with the Army of Washington, which we're going to rename as the new Army of the Potomac. We've advanced Joe Hooker to command of that army. Uh, he's got our best stats by far among any of our leaders. Our core commanders, uh, the first core will be under Winfield Scott. That is the old Army of the Susquehanna. Uh, which uh, we've taken some of the units out of and moved to some of the new corps. Uh, our second corps is under Edwin Sumner. Uh, our new third corps is under Orlando Wilcox, who we promoted from division command uh, to command that corps. Uh, and then our fifth corps, and yes, I skipped to five because I wanted to go with the historic corps that operated in the Army of the Potomac. Uh, and so historically at least by the time you get to gettysburg we're talking the first second third fifth sixth eleventh and twelfth corps um we did have the ninth corps for a while there uh, starting in i think 1864 but uh those are the core names we're going to go with phil sheridan uh, is going to command the fifth corps and you can see some of these units are going to take a couple of days to transfer to their new corps uh, i have a couple of uh, new patrons welcome thank you for your support and we're going to get your units into the game today uh, and then i'm going to create a private video that i will share over on patreon where i'm going to show every single one of the uh, patron units and where they are now since i've moved a lot of stuff around and i'll probably be doing the same with uh, grant's army out in tennessee um, I want to let you know exactly what division, uh, what corps, what army your units are in. So I'll post that video for you later on after this one goes live. All right, let's dive into today's episode. Uh, we do need to select a new policy. I'm going to select the Enrollment Act, which is the draft. It's going to take a month to get there, uh, but we are lagging severely behind the Confederates right now in terms of men in the field. Uh, and historically, that just wasn't that way. So we've got to get some new recruits in the field because we just don't have any. Let me show you what we've got available. And this is actually kind of cool because, um, among other things, you can look at how many units are in the how many men are in the field from each state, how many casualties those states have taken. So you can see we've got 38,000 available recruits. But a lot of those states don't even have enough to recruit an entirely new unit. So most of these recruits are going to go to fill the ranks of the existing units from those states, especially the ones that have suffered a lot of casualties. So you see Maine, for example, 6,600 men uh, in the field, 1,700 casualties that they've taken. Rhode Island, 20, uh, 2,100 men in the field, 1,200 casualties. Vermont hasn't lost a man. Uh, despite having almost 3,000 men in the field. Oregon's lost very few. Uh, so you can see, it's kind of cool to see. Indiana has 14,000 men in the field, but only 300 casualties. Iowa, 8,500 men, only 148 casualties. And a, a lot of that goes to do with the fact that most of our casualties have happened in the East, because most of our action has happened in the East. So as we get into more combat in the West, we'll start to see more casualties happen there. So I slipped Grant's army down to Nashville but he apparently had armies up here and so he went and grabbed those supply depots so i guess we're going to have to send grant back up here uh, to try and confront these armies and deal with them all right something else we're going to do is i'm going to go ahead and build a fort in nashville to help protect that because at some point nashville is going to become our base of operations you can see how many confederate armies are operating in this area but we're going to have to take corinth we're going to have to take vicksburg we're going to move from Nashville toward Chattanooga, toward Atlanta, Decatur, Alabama, places like that. And it'll be good to have a fort to do that with. But I guess for now, we're going to have to keep Grant's army right where it is. Uh, Confederates up to 294,000 men in the field. We're at just 231. Okay, so now I've uh, gone ahead and restructured the armies in the West. Uh, I'm creating a new army of Kentucky which is uh, going to have the job of moving into eastern Tennessee, uh, threatening Knoxville uh, specifically. 
uh, from Eastern Kentucky, and that's going to be under the command of William Tecumseh Sherman. Eventually, I want to add some more units, but I'm completely out of manpower right now. So we've got to wait until our Enrollment Act passes so that we can get those new recruits uh, in order to be able to fill out that army. In the meantime, uh, we've broken up the Army of Tennessee uh, into core. I've combined the Army of uh, the Ohio under McClellan uh, and the Army of uh, the Tennessee uh, under Grant to make a new Army of the Tennessee. Three Corps right now. McClellan will command the 13th Corps. Again, I'm going with numbers that were historically in this Army. Uh, and the three main Corps that made up Grant's Army uh, as he went on uh, the march toward Vicksburg were the 13th Corps, the 15th Corps, and the 17th Corps. So those are the numbers I went with. 15th Corps is under Meade. And uh, the 17th Corps is under uh, William Buell Franklin. Uh, we, I still have some more to do here. I've got to get some artillery moved over into Franklin's Corps. Uh, but that home base is up in Louisville, so we've got to get them moved down. Uh, right now, only the 13th Corps under McClellan is sitting in Nashville. All right, well, somehow Bernard B. snuck a corps right up past my army sitting here in central Kentucky. But in the meantime, the Army of the Potomac is going to get hit by a massive Confederate force. And I mean massive. We're talking 95,000 men altogether. We've got right around 80,000. The 1st, 2nd, 3rd, and 5th Corps. But the 3rd and 5th Corps are 20 hours away. Whereas his are almost all, actually they are all there. It's just the two headquarters that aren't. So we're going to be outnumbered about two to one for the first day of this battle. This is gonna get interesting. All right, so a couple of things about this. It's a meeting engagement, which means it's basically each side kind of starts on equal footing, but you can see he's already up as far as Hazel Grove, as far as what he controls. Uh, so I may not have a lot of flexibility as far as holding back, but I really need to try and hold defensively as best I can. We're gonna to try to park in here around Wilderness Church. Uh, historically, the Union line here at Chancellorsville ran more kind of east or west to east uh, along here from Wilderness Church over to Chancellorsville. And um, of course, that famous flanking maneuver by Stonewall Jackson uh, took him out and around Catherine Furnace, past Hazel Grove and out this way. Uh, and then he hit the Union right flank over here. Um, so we're kind of coming in from that side, but we really need to sit back as best we can and wait for our reinforcements. It is 726 in the morning, uh, and those reinforcements are 20 hours away, uh, which means we're not going to have them today. So we've got to survive an entire day uh, as best we can. Okay, we're going to dig in right here, take our chances, try and hang on as long as we can. And we'll see what happens. Obviously, we've got a heavy disadvantage. Right now, it's 3 to 1. He's got about 64,000 men to my 22,000. I'll get another core arriving shortly, but then i got to hang on for the rest of the day with just those two core. All right, here he comes. The good news is that the units he's moving in against me with right now seem to be smaller. But I don't know. And I, it's kind of a tricky spot where we are. We're trying to dig in along this creek. Hopefully some of these guns are going to be a little uh, fire from where they are. Chancellorsville is such a tricky battlefield because of all the woods. All right, let's tell the 4th Division to send out some skirmishers. Not too worried about him grabbing objectives right now because I just got to hang on. Let's look at where we're at as far as arrival. Okay, he's up to 90,000 men to my 22,000. Where, oh where, are the rest of my core? I know some of them aren't going to be here for a little bit yet, but some are supposed to be arriving soon. Two hours on the second core. And now we're saying 22 hours on the 3rd and 5th Corps. So it's a little longer than I thought. Okay, massive Confederate assault is happening right now. 
Uh, I should mention there has been another update to the game and I don't know the details but the update does concern the AI behavior. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how he behaves here. Obviously in this situation this is exactly what he should do. He's got me four to one. So even before the rest of his troops arrive and get in position he needs to attack and, and press that attack hard because he's got such an advantage and before I can uh, close the gap on those numbers. He's, he's got to hit me All right, we got the Irish Brigade right here I'm gonna give them deadly volley The rest of these units here have mixed muskets. We got to get those weapons upgraded We do have the, the fighting blue hens, three inch ordnance firing there. Second battery with 12 pounder Napoleons. Albany Saints here with 14 pounder Jameses. And Patterson's artillery with 12 pounder howitzers. Let's maybe bring Pleasanton's cavalry around to try and hit the flank of these rebels coming in here. Casualties are about the same, which is not what we want to see. Ugh, now we're actually taking more. He's got the high ground, even though we're dug in behind this creek. Yeah, this is just going to be too much, I'm afraid. Let's bring the Foreign Legion around. Because these guys are sitting over here with nothing to do at the moment. We need to get some more firepower on these Confederate brigades before they just load up on me to the point where I can't do anything. sure what Buckner's thinking here, being kind of aggressive. Yeah, this ain't going well. A thousand losses on each side. Well, wow, Buckner just charged into a superior enemy force. That was kind of dumb. He's doing it here too, though. That might be enough to break Haskin. Not entirely sure what Scanlon's doing at the moment. Not really coming around the way he should. Our reinforcements arrived yet? They have not. Could use them about now. Alright, we broke that charge. Ah, but he just broke me too. Well, that hurts. And Denver's division, I don't think it's going to fare much better. Now, here he comes around this side. We may need to pull pull this back. His morale is so much higher than mine. 
All right, it's 11 o'clock and Sumner's Corps has finally arrived, but I fear it may be too little too late. We're kind of getting surrounded here. I'm still waiting for Scammon to get in position. I don't know what he's waiting on, but he's moving slowly. You can see these brigades coming up from here. I just don't think Sumner's going to get there in time. I may be better off just to withdraw and suck up the losses on this one. Both sides have lost about 2,500 men, but I'm still outnumbered just massively right now. I might try to pull these guys back. If I can withdraw the first core, maybe back into the woods somewhere, and link up with Sumner's core as they arrive, we might have a shot with this thing. I don't know. Now, yep. we just started suffering a lot of casualties. I'm just going to go ahead and retreat. Trying to withdraw has cost me another 1,500 men and counting. And the retreat timer is only 20 minutes, so hopefully we don't lose too many more men. But that was just a matter of his men arriving first. I lost 4,000 men out of 85,000. He lost 2,500 out of 90,000. This is the trouble with uh, switching over to the core system. I just didn't have my army all ready to go and in one place. We've got to keep those core close together. All right, here it is. The Enrollment Act has been passed. So remember we had about 30, 35,000, something like that available troops to us. Well, that number is going to be massive now. We've now got 107,000 volunteers and another 500,000 draftees available to us so now we can recruit those remaining troops that we need we can beef up these numbers and get there somewhere close to where the confederates are and hopefully get a few more than them because we're going to need it all right in the meantime we're going to move the army of the kanawa toward lynchburg see if we can't relieve a little bit of this pressure on the army of the potomac we got to get the other two corps down from washington consolidate the entire army of the potomac up here north of the rappahannock river that way, if any one of those core get hit, they'll all come to their relief. And hopefully we can get their readiness up and ready to go into the south. Uh, in the meantime, let's head back over here and take a look at the situation. Sherman's going to be up to 20,000 men with his Army of Kentucky. Uh, once we're in with their recruits, uh, we're going to try to get some supply going here and then use them to try and put pressure on Knoxville. Let's go ahead and start moving Grant's army south, but try to do that all at one time as best we can. All right, so this time we've got the numbers. He sent Porterfield's Corps up here for some reason, and they ran into uh, my two corps that were coming down from Washington, and they're going to be reinforced by the rest of the corps. Uh, so now we've got the numbers, and we've got a chance to destroy uh, one corps of the Confederate Army isolated from the rest. Let's do it. All right, we're coming in from the north. We are on the attack. This is the Manassas battlefield. Looks like he's going to be dug in down here south of Henry Hill. I think we'll take the traditional route of the Union attack. Just looking to see, yeah, we can go all the way up to Bald Hill here, so we're going to do that. We've got plenty of manpower to do it with. So we've got Sheridan's Corps right here. We've got Wilcox's Corps over here. They're going to launch a flank attack. We're going to start issuing division orders from right to left. I think the artillery is good right where it is. It's got a nice open field of fire to hit his left flank. We're going to press from all sides. I'm only going to go with a two division front for Sheridan. He's got kind of a smaller area, plus they're just going to kind of hold them while we launch the main attack with the flank. 
We'll keep this Nordic division in reserve. I will move this artillery up to a spot where we can get a better look at them. And now let's just advance. I don't know why this guy's taking a little longer to get his orders out. Wilcox is right next to him. Now he's going to start shifting to adjust for that. I'm not sure what's going on here. All right, let's put out skirmishers. Now they're starting to move. And now he's got to shift back because of it. He doesn't know what to do. This should be a pretty good victory for us, but we really want to hit him and not let him get away. Try and really destroy this core if I can. Which means being pretty aggressive. Alright, I want you guys to hit that battery. You too. have here we've got the Royal Americans they've probably seen more action than any other unit these uh, the Royal Redcoats division probably gonna see our first elite units there got to deal with this battery guys press ahead all right so far so good only 219 casualties we gotta neutralize this battery as quickly as we can. They've still got 12 guns. There, they're toast. Everybody's kind of smashed together in here. Halleck, you press forward. Patterson, move up on this side. We're Stoneman skirmishers. Get some skirmishers out there, dude. Got a cavalry unit back here we should probably bring up and have available. Now that we've got all these guys bunched up over here, we've got to get them spread out a little bit. First thing I want to do, though, is I want to send Hooker over here a little closer to the center. So when he's issuing orders, they'll get there a little faster. Same thing with Wilcox, our core commander. Let's get him a little more central to the core. And then we can start kind of spreading things out a little bit here. Let's shift Plumber's division over this way let's 
push Stoneman forward. Alright, so far so good. Let's see what's going on over here. First Brigade under Greg. He historically commanded cavalry. Not sure what these guys are doing back here. Push the Royal Redcoats forward. Push Patterson forward. Halleck, let's get him pushed forward. Plumber as well. Everyone advance. Let's keep the pressure up. Probably send a detachment to get these guns. Got two whole divisions on Tolliver here. And I believe that is how it's pronounced, not Talia Pharaoh. I think it's Tolliver. Essex Brigade pouring it in. Love it. Trying to get around this burning house here. Ooh, man, that house is looking rough. Is that the Henry house? No, Henry house is over here. Pour it into them, boys. 1,300 casualties for me, 3,100 for him. That's all good stuff. Okay, let's send the Nordic Division in. Let's push them up to the front. They've been in reserve. Though my plan is still hopefully to roll up his left. Tolliver. A little concerned about these guys over here. They're looking a little unstable. Who is that? That's uh, Plumber's Division. I've only lost 500 men as a division. It's got two brigades about to hit their perk. There we go. I think this one's just about over. Yeah, Plumber's division's in rough shape. We're gonna pull them back. Halleck, however, is doing really well. Let's push him forward. We've got the Nordic division coming up here. There it is. Beautiful victory. Real nice. That makes up for that last one. 
All right, 2,200 casualties inflicting 9,500 estimated on the enemy. It's a minor federal victory, but more importantly, it uh, keeps him... Because if for some reason I had lost that battle, uh, it would have opened the door to Washington for him because uh, those units coming down from Washington were the only thing standing between that Confederate Corps and the city. We do need to beef up the defenses a little bit of Washington. Uh, it was the most fortified city on Earth. Uh, during the American Civil War, it was ringed with forts. There was really very little chance the Confederates were going to get in there. And they never really seriously tried, not with a major army anyway. Um, so we need to make sure that there's a deterrent there for that. But uh, I'm going to wrap this episode up with that battle. Long way to go. Uh, I am going to, as I mentioned, record later today a, a video, a private video that I'll share on Patreon. Uh, for all of you who are patrons, so you can see exactly where your brigades and divisions are in the various armies. Uh, and uh, we'll let you know that. And if for some reason you don't see your unit in that video, reach out and let me know. As always, thanks for watching.